So we've all been to the store and seen the label natural or more than a few food products. It's got to be even better than organic, you might think. Natural equals nature, right? You hear the word natural and you hear birds singing, wind across the wheat field, mountain streams, babbling brooks, good wholesome food, untouched by chemicals or man-made things, right? Not necessarily. Hello, I'm Jason Huffman, Editor-in-Chief of Food Chemical News. Welcome to the Knife and Fork Show. The term natural has been the source of much trouble for the food industry recently. In California, it seems there's a lawsuit a week against a manufacturer for calling its products natural because they contain a particular chemical or genetically engineered ingredient. Ben and Jerry's ice cream, log cabin syrup, bird's eye sweet corn, all are products that have had their natural claims challenged by consumer groups and sometimes even taken to court. Joining me to explain the real meaning and history of the term natural on food labels are two well-respected food regulatory experts in Washington. Robert Bob Hibbert was a USDA attorney for 10 years before working three years as a general counsel at the American Meat Institute and 24 years in private practice. And Anthony Pavel has been working for food companies for the last 10, or sorry, 11 years, helping them to stay out of trouble. Both have recently landed at the Washington DC law firm of Morgan Lewis and Bacchius, where they have substantially beefed up the food regulation team there, and I apologize for food, metamorph food metaphors because they come too easily. Um, at Food Chemical News, my reporters count on both of these gentlemen as incredibly valuable sources. Bob, this is your area of expertise. When a meat and poultry company says our product is natural, what does that mean? Well, actually, well, it's good to be here, Jason, although that introduction makes me feel a little old. But I'll get past <laughs> that. Uh, but... Um, yeah, actually, at USDA, there is a working definition that's been on the books for about 30 years, uh, and they're, they've, they're rethinking it, but, but they are the one place in town in the regulatory world where there is a working definition of natural, and it essentially says that to qualify as natural, the, the, the food product is not supposed to have any artificial or synthetic ingredients, and it's supposed to be no more than minimally processed is the term. Uh, and Seems like a subjective term. Yeah, yeah, process. Of course, right. And of course, what happens with with all sorts of regulatory line drawing is when you you create a definition, you then straight another set of questions about what the the definition means. So, for the last thirty years, uh, USDA, and part of this is because USDA, unlike FDA, has prior label approval. So it's harder for USDA to just kind of stand back from the issue and say we want to touch it. They're like a they're like an umpire in a baseball game that has to call the balls and strikes. So on natural, that's 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 their strike zone, and that's what they uh, that's what they try and control. I want to stop you there for a second. Prior label approval, how does that work necessarily? Well, it means uh, essentially that the USDA system is different in the sense that the inspector in every plant the mark of inspection on the product, and, and part of that also is that processors actually have to submit their formulations and their processing procedures and their proposed labels to USDA reviewers. It's dedicated for staff acceptance. for this particular yes. job, yes. isn't there? Yes. So if I'm making a natural claim, USDA vets that claim, and they decide whether or not I can use it. All right. So I, I stopped at Giant this morning, and I bought this chicken breast. Mm -hmm. It says all natural. And I'm looking forward to cooking this up sometime soon. Hopefully the, the lights don't cook it right now. Enjoy. Um, what does that not tell me? What could be in there that I don't know because it's called all natural? Well, it, it, go back to the definition. The, the, the USDA definition says you can't add other artificial synthetic ingredients to the formulation. So by definition, really, any, any single ingredient piece of meat or poultry, be it that chicken or... Or, or ground beef or a sirloin steak is eligible for the term natural because it's only got that one ingredient. It's only got the piece of chicken, the ground beef, or so on. And they're not concerned at that point in terms of that claim with, say, how the animal was raised. They're just concerned that it's, it's simply a piece of chicken, and they consider that to be natural. And I don't know if this is the case on this particular product, but what if that product had sodium injected in it to make it a little, little heavier. Well, that's that's actually that's a point of controversy in another rule that's pending at USDA. This so-called enhanced product rule that would make the labeling of that kind of addition more prominent. But as of now, USDA and there are some people that strongly disagree with this considers that natural because even though it's got other ingredients, they don't consider anything unnatural about the sodium. Or the moisture that's added. 
What if the chicken ate feed that was genetically engineered? Well, that's another point of controversy. And of course, that's a big point of controversy that's coming up in the litigation you're seeing, which, which mostly involves FDA regulated products. But and FDA, since they're not really regulating the term, there's that vacuum that we learned, you know, nature abhors. And, and what's, what's moving into that space are plaintiff's lawyers who <laughs> uh, are putting together, trying to make some money and put together these class actions to claim people are being misled. And, and there, uh, in, in, in essence, neither FDA nor USDA considers either actively or passively would consider the inclusion of a GMO ingredient in a formulation to defeat your eligibility for the term natural. And that is, that is I think, one of the main points that the plaintiff's bar is not trying to drive in this litigation, this notion that people are being misled by the combination of that claim with a food that contains GMO ingredients. Okay. Well, we just talked about USDA's approach to this issue. Let's talk about FDA. I also bought this product. It's regulated by the FDA. Um, when this product says natural vegetable sticks, what does that mean? I have no idea. Uh, I mean, that's, that's really, that's, no, I think really does anyone. I, I think that that gets to FDA for understandable reasons, doesn't want to touch it, uh, doesn't really want to get tangled up in that definition. As I said, uh, USDA probably would be, would be in the same place if it could be, but because of prior approval, it can't. But it's, I mean, defining natural, you know, it's like, it's like holding water in your hands. I mean, it's just, it's, 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 it's inherently a vague and subjective term that means different things to different people. And it's just not the kind of thing that the regulatory process can do a very good job of capturing. And what so, Bob's not saying here is that if you go back and look at that FSIS definition of natural, you'll find his signature on it. So in some ways, you can blame this all on Bob. That's right. It's all Bob's. That's right. Well, it, well, yeah, and what happened, to go back to, it, it, historically, we actually, when I, when I signed that thing 30 years ago, we didn't want to touch it either. But w w we were trying originally to say, let's not go there because it's... Well, we'll force what, you into action there. because here's the FDA sitting there, in the same position. Well, because, no, it, it, because, because of the pressure, the day-to-day -day pressure from, from companies wanting to use the term and us concluding in conjunction with our superiors and our lawyers that we really... We, we couldn't defend banning a word, so we had to do something. And, you know, that, that definition is what we came up with 30 years ago as kind of a working definition that, you know, one of these days we're going to firm up with rulemaking, but, of course, that's never happened 30 years later. So this time of year we like to look ahead 2013 and think about what's coming down the pike. Um, do you not expect any kind of rulemaking in relation to natural labeling from either FDA or USDA? Well, USDA in theory has had has had something pending for now going on about six years. About six years ago, USDA said, "Well, we think it's time to update this, and we think we need to get it in the regulations." Address that sodium uh, issue, maybe. Yeah, yeah, and and there were a lot of controversies bubbling around okay. back then, and and uh, but they they had some public meetings. They got some comments. Three years later, they put out what's called an advance notice of public rulemaking back in two thousand nine, and and they, they didn't really propose anything. They just said. Well, what do you think about this and that? And of course, they got comments all around. Three years later, they're sitting on that, and 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 I don't think I don't think they're too anxious to uh, stick their necks out on this unless they absolutely have to. And what about FDA? Do you think FDA is going to touch us? No, no. I, I, I think that again. I, I think the uh, you know that could change it if if we start to get some, and we haven't yet, but if we start to get some strange verdicts coming out of the courts. Uh, that that start to you know, scramble up, you know, the process. Then you could see possibly pressure on both agencies to to fill that vacuum. Uh, you know, at, at that point, uh, companies look to the regulators for support sometimes. But absent that, I don't see much happening. Just about out of time, but I, I would be remiss if I didn't cover this one area in relation to natural labeling. Um, there is a label that's been through a set of standards, and that's organic. Um, how does organic differ from natural? Well, organic differs a lot because organic has has you know a a system you know that, that's monitored by USDA, but there's a lot of private certification that goes on to, to to back up that claim. 
And one of the issues, one of the issues that was when those rules were originally proposed for organic was the inclusion or exclusion of GMOs. And, uh, and, and that, uh, that was, uh, that was contrary, and, and, and USDA pulled back and said, no GMOs in organic. So that is, that is the position on organic. And really, I think the success of organic products is part of what's driven the attractiveness of natural. Because, well, I don't want to go through all that trouble of being organic certified, but natural sounds, as you were saying earlier, natural sounds kind of just as good, and it's a lot easier to use, so why not? You know why not go through? Exactly. Why not push the why not push the easy button instead of the harder one? I think that's that's one of the big drivers of the of the use of the term these days. Okay. Well, that's all the time we have to talk about this topic. Stick around because these two guys are coming right back to talk about another issue: the evolution of grass. No, we're not talking about drugs, or are we? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs>